This Week in Startups is brought to you by DigitalOcean, providing the easiest cloud platform to deploy, manage, and scale applications. Sign up today and receive a free $100 credit at do.co slash twist. Walker Corporate Law, specializing in the representation of entrepreneurs. Visit walkercorporatelaw.com. And Hover, your online identity begins with your domain name. Show who you are and what you're passionate about. Go to hover.com slash twist and get 10% off your first purchase. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Startups, the program where we talk to entrepreneurs who are creating companies that delight customers or save people time or save them money. But today, we're going to get serious, and we're going to talk about one of the leading causes of death, uh, death in the world, which is drowning. 175,000 children die every year from drowning worldwide. 3,500 people in the United States die every year unnecessarily from drowning. This is a preventable death that occurs. We're not talking about old age. We're not talking about cancer. We're talking about something that technology should be able to solve. And some of you know on this very podcast over the last three years, I've been saying, why doesn't somebody create a solution and solve for drowning? And so we did a bunch of research, and we finally found a company that's doing just that. Mark Karen is with us. He is the co-founder and CEO of Wave Drowning Detection. And you're also an investor and an advisor to startups like me. Yes, I have not not nearly as often or as big as you, but yes. uh, I have have done a few. I've, I've mostly been on the startup side myself, but kind of in between startups, I have invested in some and advise advisory board uh, with others. But yeah, so I've seen a lot of different startups. So I've been thinking about this issue of drowning for a long time, mm-hmm. and every time a new technology comes out, it makes one wonder what could you use it for. And when I saw computer vision. Yep. I wrote a blog post and I said, hey, if anybody wants to solve for drowning using computer vision, mm-hmm. I'll put the first 250K in. I got no takers. So I got a bunch of people emailing me, talking about it, yeah. lots of people with ideas, yeah. but nobody actually wanted to take it on. Yep. Thus is my life, Mark. <laughs> the well, a million ideas, yeah. s- tons of problems to yep. solve in the world, yep. and yep. everybody wants to create another goddamn photo app <laughs> and i say to people jesus h christ is there the need yeah. for another social network or video app maybe right but can we solve some real problems and you are solving a real problem with wave yeah. drowning detection how does it work because i think i looked at it through computer vision but mm-hmm. apparently you're looking at it through iot and hardware am i correct yep, yep. It, it's a wearable. We do have a, a long-range uh, vision of, of, of applying computer vision to this, but it's a very difficult thing to do with computer vision right now. And, and one of the reasons, the primary reason, well, there's, there's a couple main reasons. One is it's very hard to detect, actually identify, distinguish a drowning victim underwater versus someone swimming underwater. Right. It's surprisingly, it's sort of it's not the Hollywood splashing, struggling. It's it's the, there's a there's a well documented sort of biological instinct that kicks in that people don't go crazy so hard to identify. The other thing you also need unobstructed view, which is very hard, especially in public pools and crowded pools. You just don't get an un, un, unobstructed view. Take a lot of cameras. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we think um, the wearable approach. I mean, what's really of course changed is the um, the cost and and, and reliability of Bluetooth, low energy Bluetooth is what we're using in a wearable. And it can either go into what we call a, a tracker, um, little two little Bluetooth beacons in here that just kind of go here and can be comfortably worn swimming, or you can attach them to uh, the, the side of goggles and, and wear it that way. It can be in a swim cap. So what I'm um, looking at here for people listening, let me see one of those. Sure. Um, the first one looks like a, a pair of over the head earphones, weighs ounces. Yep. Um, it's got foam on the inside, so it fits pretty easy. This is a yep. prototype, I take it? Yep. And so in this prototype, um, it would go around the back of your head like that mm-hmm. Star Wars character yeah. from The Empire Strikes Back yes. that worked for Lando Calrissian. <laughs> Emmy Award winning producer Jackie, I want that character's name in my chat room within 30 <laughs> seconds. We'll see how good you are with those Emmys. It's the, I think it's TX something or whatever is the name of the character. My, my daughter will, will know. Uh, and so somebody would put this around their head. I'm putting yeah. it on myself and embarrassing myself right now. But it just looks like um, the reverse of, uh, you know, uh, a vi- the reverse of a visor. Yeah. 
and this would have in it Bluetooth yep. to signal. Yep. But how would it know it's underwater or not? So, because water actually blocks the signal. So, at, at, oh. at about one or two inches of depth, it, it, it loses touch. Of course, we do it on both sides, not only for redundancy, but also for a swimmer, for, you know, freestyle, you're always one up, you know, one, one will be above. And it's an above ground Bluetooth system that's tracking that. And there's some pretty good technology in that, and that enables us to extend a thousand foot range, which, of course, you know, from regular Bluetooth, it only goes 30 or 40 feet. Um, so it's using very sophisticated antennas uh, to to extend that range, and then we track uh, up to hundreds of of uh, devices and times two because there's two per uh, per device. And we're essentially uh, every time we lose touch with one of those, we essentially start start a stopwatch. And and 30 seconds is kind of the the limit that drowning detection experts say that people really shouldn't be underwater that long. And even what is the time? 30 okay. seconds. 30, 30 seconds, seconds yeah. is too long to be underwater. But yep. I can hold my breath for you a can. minute. You can. So when I was hearing about this, um, people, how do you deal with people who can um, stay underwater for a long time? Yep. So you, first of all, most kids can't, right? Um, all right. But, so this is know, mostly for kids. It's uh, Not necessarily. A lot, of, a lot of pools we're talking to are, are looking to mandate it for everyone. But you can uh, set different levels. So the idea is there'll probably mm -hmm. be um, two or three different colors of these trackers. Got and and for my kids, it ah. might be only 20 seconds. We're more advanced or maybe 40 seconds for... So you, you could know, pick as you summer. get on the pool and put this on. Yeah. And what a fascinating um, concept. I was sure there was some sort of new uh, device that would let you know you were underwater, but it's the absence of Bluetooth exactly. that alerts people. Yep. yep. But how would you know that it was this unit and where the mm -hmm. unit was in the right, pool. Right. Because Bluetooth is not yep. GPS, correct? Correct. And so we, but we actually are developing, we'll be testing shortly, um, applying uh, essentially triangulation. So you'll have three of our systems that will be able to triangulate and identify the location. We're thinking within a meter or so. Okay. Which is... A couple of feet. Yeah. W which is great, uh, obviously, especially for dark water environments and natural water. So, so ponds, we were talking about Graydon Pool in Ridgewood, New Jersey a little while ago. <laughs> yeah, so I grew up at Graydon Pool. And tragically, I grew up in Brooklyn, but my cousins yeah. lived out in uh, Ridgewood. And we would go to Graydon Pool, which is a public pool that's essentially like a lake. It's a lake. thousands yeah. of yeah. people. Yeah. And there are lifeguards there, but yep. you're largely on your own. Yeah, well, they're, they're, um, our lifeguard, I think you're referencing, we mentioned before, about 10 years ago, there was a, a death there, yeah. and um, there were, I think, something like eight lifeguards on duty, and but, you know, there's hundreds of kids in the water, and with dark water in particular, you slip, you know, a foot or two under, and, and you can't be seen, and so location, last known location of where that tracker was last seen is obviously critical to aid rescue. It also, even in clear water pools, it can be used to sort of identify if a beginner swimmer is approaching the deep end. You might do a, like a minor alert to a lifeguard. We mm. actually have the lifeguards wear uh, like a vibrating bracelet. We also have audio alarms. Cues, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to give them something that takes their eyes off the pool. That's kind right, of a Right. So the aspect. double vibration to look yeah. on the deep end. Right. So if the yellow was for inexperienced and right. the blue was for experienced, and right. then their you know, senior was red. Right. If you saw blue go into the deep area, right. you weren't be right. certified. It's alarm's right. going to go off. That's fantastic. But you also get you know, notification, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. By the way, the character we were thinking about is actually Lobot, L-O-B-O-T. <laughs> we can pull it up on my screen uh, to the right. tech team here. Right. Uh, but if uh, you we'll didn't see if know... my daughter Jessica knew that as soon as Lobot said it, she, is the... Uh, a... Thank you to uh, <laughs> Wikipedia. Uh, yeah. yeah, I got the yeah. wrong screen but there. But the other thing about location, we talk, we get just back to your computer vision comment, is that we looked at this, how to do this computer vision. And I'm right. actually... An and investor. there's some people doing it, right? There's a German company and a they Swiss are. or a Swiss company yeah, doing a it. a Norwegian company. There it is. There's thing. Lobot, by the way, if okay. you were wondering. <laughs> Your a, unit is bigger. about <laughs> one fifth of the size of Lobot's. Yeah, Lest yeah. anybody think you're going to have to have both ears covered. This is no. going to go just, a, it's about the size of your temple. Yeah, it's, it's actually a, it's patterned a after some lap swimmers listen to music with a little it's headset. It's probably just like around. that. It's, it's, That's actually an interesting idea. Yeah, I bet you yeah. if this had music on it, it would be we like a... I have had that request, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll it see. Could be, or it could have speakers so when they say adult swim... <laughs> all the kids, it vibrates, or you could yeah. shock the children to get out of the pool until <laughs> they uh, do that. But let me see this other one here. You got yeah. one with a. Um, yeah, so this is goggles. just a, a goggle. So you could do clips on, onto goggles. Ah. You could, 
So that you use your own goggles with that, but you could also build them into goggles. Um, I like the idea of building so, them into goggles because mm -hmm. then people want to wear goggles anyway, and yep. you just say, listen, you yep. got to wear goggles. Right. And if you just throw it around your neck, it still works. Yeah. Right? It could be around your neck or it could be above on your temples. Um, with, around the neck is, neck is underwater more frequently. Oh, right? yeah. 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 So it's got to be up there. Yeah. I mean, the idea is to get something as close to the face, right? Essentially, the mouth and nose, obviously, mm -hmm. where you're breathing. And as you know, you can drown in a couple inches of water. So, and even mm -hmm. have what's called floating victims. Somebody might float to the surface with their back, and, ah. and their, but their face is underwater. They're not, they're not breathing. Hmm. Um, but you want to be able to identify them. And, and to be, distinguish between someone who's doing that versus someone who's just kind of doing the dead man float, as they call I'm it. I'm curious, when you were doing your research uh, for this business, or as you've done your research, yeah. how many of the drowning deaths in America, let's right, start there, right, since right. that's where we are right now, um, I want to know how many of the deaths were in environments where your solution could mm -hmm. have been deployed as opposed to right, somebody right. slipped and fell in a lake when they were alone on a hike yeah, when we get yeah. back on This Week in Startups. If you're a startup, you need to have the most reliable, the fastest, and the most affordable infrastructure. And that's where DigitalOcean comes in. They provide the easiest cloud platform to deploy, manage, and scale your applications, 150,000 businesses uh, in the world use them and love them. And Inc. called them one of the world's fastest growing startups. You can rely on DigitalOcean to remove infrastructure friction and deliver industry leading price and performance. DigitalOcean is of course built by developers for developers and they have a huge learning community with tons of resources and tutorials. And boy, do we have a great deal for you today. If you sign up, you'll receive a $100 credit at do.co.twist. do.co slash T-W-I-S-T. And here is an amazing testimonial from Content Ignite. Since moving to DigitalOcean, digital our setup is ultimately more capable than what we had before the migration. Downtime has become a rarity and our hosting costs have decreased by more than 90%. What? Yes, that's right. You're gonna get predictable, straightforward billing. You'll always know what you're gonna pay. And the flat pricing structure across all data centers and regions makes it even more affordable. Customers love this. You remember Mitch Weiner called into This Week in Startups back in 2010. That's right, eight years ago. He was working in marketing and he asked me my advice. I said, go to Techstars and find some co-founders and create something you're passionate about. Well, that's DigitalOcean. And he called back in in 2014. He was a guest actually on the program after they raised $37 million from Andreessen Horowitz. So it's very special for me to have DigitalOcean on the podcast and be a supporter of this podcast. This Week in Startups is full circle. Eight years ago, Mitch came on the podcast. So crazy. Anyway, if you want to sign up, and I recommend you do, you'll receive a $100 credit. So go ahead and grab that $100 credit while you can. do.co slash twist. do.co slash twist. And you will love DigitalOcean. We use it. We love it. It's amazing. Many of my startups are using it, and it's just fabulous. So go ahead and check out do.co slash twist and get that $100 credit and get in there and start using that really easy-to-use, manageable, scalable, and affordable cloud service. There you go. Okay. Thanks again, DigitalOcean. We appreciate your support. Okay. Let's get back to this amazing podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. I'm your host, Jason Calacanis. You can follow me on Twitter at Jason, and my email is jason at calacanis.com. If you've got a startup that's in the Goldilocks zone, which means you've finished your product, got a little bit of traction, but you don't have that Series A or Series B yet. Get it? Not too hot, not too cold. Today on the program, Mark Karen, who is the co-founder and CEO of Wave Drowning Detection, and you can see them at wavedrowningdetection.com. And uh, we were talking before about computer vision. Mm -hmm. You see a way to incorporate computer vision with your IoT sensor kind of approach. Yep. What is that? Yep. Well, as I mean, one of the challenges with computer vision is very hard to do, as, as we talked about before, mm -hmm. and... Um, with the location determination that we'll be adding to the system, we will be able to track every individual swimmer um, pretty precisely inside a, a crowded pool. And that is going to incorporate with um, filming, you know, uh, establishing a videotape of that, you know, record of that, 
will be great training data for an algorithm that actually can start to distinguish. And, you know, when five kids get together and they turn around and then back up, which, which one is which, right? Mm. And so being able to, you know, track individuals and then be able to track how long they're going underwater with computer vision. Because I think that the underwater camera is a very difficult thing. It's incredibly expensive and burdensome to deploy. It doesn't really work in natural water. Um, so we think ultimately computer vision will play a big role, but it's going to take some time. When we went to the break, I was asking you how many of the uh, deaths would have been preventable yeah. because we yeah. have drowning as yeah. a, you know, a pretty sig- significant number of right. people die every year, but right. some of them would not have been impacted by your technology right. or the computer right. vision yep. uh, vision that I have. Mm-hmm. How many of them would be directly impacted by an IoT like solution. Yep. Yep. So um, there's we have some some data that I, I sent over. So there you can there's a couple things you can carve out, right? So there's uh, bathtubs. Uh, a number of infants drown in bathtubs. That's that actually, unbelievable. It's actually declined quite a bit. That's actually the one area that there's been really steady decline with just education and and. Never and leave your kid yeah. in a bathtub yeah. alone, and that's like, even for a second. Yeah. And that's like two and under is where most of those those yeah. deaths occur, right? So that's really been declining. And there's, you know, I don't know if technology will ever really solve that problem. You never should <laughs> leave a kid alone in a bathtub. Yeah, right? no, no. It's um, you know, you mentioned kind of the 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 slip and you know slip and fall into a body of water that you yeah. didn't mean to fall into. Um, that, that's a pretty small percent. Um, we have we actually have have a, have a colorful version of this, but um, if you see down here, uh, the natural water drownings. This is kind of the, the the left side is some of the fictions people think natural water warnings are mostly due to kids falling in the water. Um, right. Actually, seventy six percent of kids who drown in natural water lakes, ponds, rivers are actually they were there on purpose, right? They were swimming, they were playing around in the water. Got right? it. Three so, out of so four that, times, they were intentionally yeah, going in the water. Yeah. It's and, not a slip and fall off the dock right, situation. Right, right, And the other, the bottom <clears throat> row here <clears throat> is that there's also a notion of the kids just kind of snuck out and the parents weren't aware of it. Um, there's a little bit of that in backyard pools, but even then, a parent is responsible for supervising the kid. They just lost track of it for a minute and something happened. So, yeah, it's even so, worse than that now. I mean, yeah. there has been a rash this summer, you may have been reading about, it's, of drownings yeah. tragically when parents were on their phones. Right. They're, they're actually 10 feet from the pool. They're, they're, they're facing the pool, but they're on their phone. They don't notice. Yeah. So, obviously, so our system certainly could address When you're that. on your phone, parents, please understand the amount of time it takes for you to play a game of Sudoku, whatever that's called, <laughs> or to check Instagram yeah. is much greater than the time it takes yeah. to drown. Drowning yeah. occurs in what time frame typically? Well, uh, it's, it, for, it's the smaller the child, the, the quicker it happens, right? Because they have this less you know, resources to, to grow. But it's basically about a minute that if, if you're without breathing to a minute, then, then neurological damage can start. So it's, it's wow. quick. Yeah. And what is the amount of time you have to save somebody? Sometimes people get underwater for three, four, five minutes and yep. still survive. Sure. Well, again, the older and larger you are, the, the better chance you have. But Because um, it's oxygen so, in your blood already. Exactly. Yeah. Keeping, yeah. it's still moving, around, yeah. still circulating. Yeah. You don't so, s- so basically, they say at, at five minutes um, for a kid, they're, they're basically not... Re- they're going to res- die. Not resuscitate. Yeah. You yeah. can resuscitate brain, brain damage is actually... A, Unfortunately, a very common. A lot more kids get permanent brain damage than they do wow. die. Yeah, yeah. That's tragic. Yeah, yeah. So we we um, have so actually the stats on the top here. So there's and and you have to consult a lot of different sources. Dig these for the U.S. alone. About seven thousand teens and, and kids uh, go to the ER every year from from drowning. Half of those roughly require hospitalization. About half of those suffer some kind of permanent. Fifteen hundred get that neurological damage and nine hundred drown. Drown for drowning. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. And then adults account for uh, a whole another. To two to three X beyond that. Unbelievable. Um, a lot of people are focused on kids because that's our responsibility to take care of them. Um, but the other the, the other point in the bottom here about, um, again, another myth is that, you know, they're not supervised. 80% of uh, over various studies of those child drownings occur under some, for, some form of supervision. Which is so there's, crazy. there's some adult that was supposed to be watching them and, and didn't. Or, and it can be very hard to see. It, it, even in a, in a private pool. So we've been... We're mostly focused on commercial pools. We think it's a very big problem to solve. It's kind of a harder problem to solve. And we think establishing our credibility there is critical to then go in, into the into the consumer pool. And commercial pools have a motivation to do this because yeah. they have insurance. They have yep. liability. Yep. 
Yep. Um, and responsibility, like a known responsibility. And the people that, that are running commercial pools, you know, they're not in it to get rich. They're in it because they enjoy helping kids and adults get exercise and swim. Sure. And it's it's interesting. I've, I've sold into a lot of technology markets and enterprises. And um, but my co-founder has been doing this for, for 12 years. This is kind of the third generation system that I partnered with him. Um, he had a, a, a tragically... 12 years ago, a, a, a daughter, his daughter, a friend of, of hers, drowned in a local town park very similar to the Graydon Pool we mentioned before. And he's uh, an inventor, designer guy. He said, like you, this must be technology to solve this. And right. he, actually, he was way early. Yeah, and, and it was tough. He was dealing with some technology that, that was hard to work with, uh, yeah. some underwater sonar things, whatnot. But then we connected about two and a half years ago, and I came out of you know, the wireless technology background early in my career. And, and you have really, a video of this, correct? We have, yeah. Yeah, let's um, see if we can get that. Video we have a little video out. of uh, the system in action um, in a pool. Okay, we'll get that is, queued up. Yeah, uh, and um, it's not deployed yet. You're going to be releasing it next year. Yeah, so we're 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 going to continue uh, uh, successively more featured versions that we're testing uh, in, in pools, and we're looking to commercially launch it next year. Yeah, got it. So yeah. here we go. Yeah, uh, the tracker. You have a kid there because we got to remember yep. most people are listening right now. That's right. So uh, you'll see as long as as one of the you know sides of the head is above water, as I mentioned before, you know freestyle. It's in contact. If you go down under thirty seconds, essentially the system is tracking all that. It can alert. Mention the vibrating bracelet. There can be a, a spoken alert. Um, there can be a strobe, and then obviously it's up to the lifeguard to, uh, to save. Uh, you know, the victim. Um, they're also going to be alert to a parent app. You know, if, if oh, that's great. Part of that. Yeah, yeah. That could give a false sense of security. There, there's got to be some false positive issues as well as. Yeah. We, um, my phone was off Wi-Fi or lost yeah, signal, yeah. and I didn't get the signal. So, yeah. you a little concerned about those? Yeah, kind of no, things? it's it's not in, in a public pool is never going to have the parent be the primary responsibility. It, it's always the lifeguard, right. right guard. Um, what will this cost to install, do you think? What will a pool have to spend? Because so, this looks like yep. it's about 30, 40 units there. Yep. So we kind of have uh, the target, and, and we're, you know, th uh, these pools, of course, al also don't have, tend to have big, huge budgets for the most part. Um, and that's been one of the things that held back other systems. that have just been expensive. I mentioned to install, you know, so this mm -hmm. is all portable. It can, you, know, you can wheel it out in the morning if you, if you want and just leave it there for the day and put it back uh, at night. Um, so we're targeting below ten thousand dollars as kind of entry price for for a smaller system. For bigger pools, it'll get up in sort of the fifteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand for really large pools. Um, for like hotel pools, that would be much smaller. It can be in the few thousand dollar range. Mm. Um, and then also we're targeting consumer, right? So I mentioned we want to really establish the credibility in, in the commercial space, and we're, we're looking to partner with um, sort of the smart home hub vendors, right? They're trying to provide co connectivity and using Bluetooth for that. And the ones that are allowing sort of third-party apps to run locally, which most don't, you know, Echo devices, mm. you can't put your app in the device. It's all in the cloud. Not the kind of, this is not the kind of thing you want to have in the cloud, right? You don't have yeah. any potential. So that that's, uh, we, we think it's going to be, a, a, we want to be ultimately, you know, the pool safety solution for the smart home. Okay, so we have a video here. Let's play the video. Uh, yes. So as we mentioned, uh, each swimmer wears a, a, a tracker or part of their goggles. The, that above ground system you saw there is in communication and we're monitoring every single swimmer and we will have location. And we also measure how long they're under. We're talking about 30 seconds, right? Um, so it's, I mentioned it's, it's, it's Bluetooth. Um, if they go under too long, uh, we're alerting lifeguards, strobe light, audio alert, mm -hmm. um, vibrating bracelet. And then they can jump in. You see, that's kind of a shot of a pretty crowded pool that often these public pools are on a hot day. Um, so the idea is... To, and there it is. Boom. Yeah. Because yeah. every second counts. Now, they will also know the location, potentially. That's in, in the, the next version. Yep. Yeah. See, my idea was to put a light at the top of the pool, like mm -hmm. a floodlight. Right. Robotic floodlight. Mm -hmm. And if the computer vision... Mm -hmm which in your case would be Bluetooth, but it could be any signal, told mm -hmm. them that this person could potentially be in distress, right. would be to point the floodlight at them yep. and make yep. it a gradient that went from, let's say, yellow to yep. orange to red yep. Yep. and followed the body yeah. of the person. So now if yeah. they're swimming yeah. and it's moving, you'd be like, well, wait a second, it's moving. Yeah. Um, and then I was thinking, wow, when AR goggles come out, 
You throw on yes. AR goggles yep. as a lifeguard, and you see the percentage yes. chance above each person. We, uh, yeah, so you're thinking yep. about that as exactly. well. So yeah. AR we goggles would do that pretty well. Yep. How Absolutely. far and off a, do you and think a heads-up display to, to every swimmer, you're kind of tracking how long they've been underwater and if the beginner swimmer versus yeah. an advanced swimmer. Yeah, exactly. Also, if they're peeing, because you would have the <laughs> lens I don't think to know. Do the pee Is that sensor. true, that dyes <laughs> that they have in pools? Is that a real thing? I don't know. Emmy Watering Producer, Jackie, I want to know, once and for all, we're all wondering if that is a is old it? wives' tale, <laughs> urban legend. To identify kids peeing in the pool. They said like it would be like yeah. reactive and it would turn a blue circle around them if they uh, pee in the pool. Now, Graydon Pool. It sounds like a good myth to propagate so kids don't exactly. pee in the pool. Exactly. <laughs> it is a pretty good one. In Graydon Pool, it was a dark it's pool water, and it's water, natural yeah. water that's, that's and there's 5,000 people hopefully it's a huge lake hopefully people aren't taking a leak in the lake but <laughs> I'm getting a sense that probably some people do um, so when we get back from this quick break I want to talk to you about funding a business sure. designed for oh here we go does a urine revealing pool chemical exist <laughs> rumors of a chemical that can be added to swimming pools which will reveal the presence of urine it's a claim rumor. rating it's false oh. according to Snopes no matter what your parents might have told you, <laughs> there isn't any magical chemical that when added to a swimming pool will reveal the presence of urine know. in the water by producing right. brightly colored cloud. I hope not too many kids are listening in the podcast here. Okay, yes, no. <laughs> but uh, I just funded a company that does this. So kids, you should know that starting in 2019, <laughs> pools will be doing this. We're going to yeah. send out, we should start a meme. Um, where we send out to everybody that in 2019 all pools will have this mandatory <laughs> due to legislation by our president Donald Trump. No more peeing in the pools at Mar-a-Lago, please. Uh, when we get back from this quick break, I want you to explain to me how you make a company doing something um, that is noble but niche mm -hmm. yep. uh, and hardware and requires a behavior change. How does one fund a company that has so many hurdles yet in front of it? Yep. Um, when we get back on This Week in Startups. This week, I have spent at least 10 hours cleaning up legal messes at startups I'm investing in. In one case, the founders didn't have vesting schedules. And one of the founders left the company. So now this 40% of the company is owned by a founder who doesn't even work there and only worked there for six months. In other cases, people use the wrong corporate structure. They were LLCs, which then prevents them from ever getting venture capital. In other cases, they were registered in a foreign country and couldn't get investors in America. In other cases, they didn't even have non-disclosures and non-solicitation. So an employee left one of my startups and took three people with them because they didn't have a non-solicitation. All of these legal errors would have easily been caught by my friend Scott Walker at the Walker Corporate Law Group. They are a boutique law firm, and you've heard me talk about the Walker Corporate Law Group here on This Week in Startups many times. Well, they are focused on entrepreneurs and startups only. This is what they do at Walker Corporate Law, and they encouraged fixed fees. In other words, they tell you what they're going to charge you for a service. So you don't have to sit there with that anxiety waiting to open that PDF and seeing some huge bill. Nope. You know up front what it's going to cost to do those mergers and acquisitions, licensing agreements, start your company, employee stock option plans, terms of service, privacy policies, all these things have to be done right. And they will cost 10 times as much to fix because I'm literally doing that. Before I invest in a company, I give them a list. You have to fix the vesting schedule. You've got to get the company incorporated properly. You've got to get the IP assignment done. I'm literally doing cleanup work that Scott Walker would have solved for these companies had they used him as their attorney. So give him a call, 415-979-9998. You've heard me say that number before, 415-979-9998. Or email Scott directly, scott at walkercorporatelaw.com, scott at walkercorporatelaw.com, or visit walkercorporatelaw.com. You really have to get focused on these things. Have the right corporate structure, have the right cap table, have the right vesting schedule, IP assignments. If your company's worth doing, it's worth doing correctly. Get your legal stuff dialed in so that you don't have red flags popping up. And we literally had a meeting before uh, this podcast where I was sitting with one of my people who went through some diligence and there were like seven issues that needed to be fixed. And we got to the end and said, you know what? Is this a sign that the CEO doesn't know what they're doing? 
Is this too many red flags for us to invest? Well, I'm telling you candidly, if you have too many of these red flags come up during due diligence, you could lose quality investors. So go talk to Scott Walker. He's a great guy. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. Hey, everybody. Hundreds of thousands of people every year tragically drowned. Many of those, perhaps most of those, could be prevented with the solution that Mark Karen is working on. WaveDrowningDetection.com is the solution. And it's, um, it's not easy to do a hardware startup. Right. And you're doing a hardware startup where you have to sell into a quirky group of customers. The mm -hmm. customers, to your own uh, admission, mm -hmm. are in it because they want to provide pools and summer fun to kids. Uh, they may not have the budget for this. The margin might be challenged. What has the reaction been mm -hmm. in the investment community? I'm sure everybody wants to take the meeting, but how do you get... Yeah investors to commit to this because it doesn't seem like enterprise software with huge margins or a marketplace yep. or things that VCs are used to, or are you going to go the traditional VC route? How does this become a hundred million dollar a year business with a 50, 60% margin that right, they need? Right, right. So the answer is we think it can become that business, but we're not going to venture now because mm. it is not a typical thing you know, it's not. They wouldn't respond well software. to Software, yeah, and and I've, you know, have raised venture money in the past, and I've had some initial conversations with people I know, and mm. it's it's at this stage in particular, you know, it, there's just too many question marks as you brought up. So, I think, you know, but of course we've had to answer those questions for ourselves and and committing to this, right? So. It, although some of the ways you describe the market are true, it, it's also a very big market. There, mm. There's somewhere in the neighborhood of 300,000 commercial pools in the United States. In the United States alone? In the United States alone. And wow. then there's another 10 million, it's sort of 7 million uh, uh, commercial pools and another 3 million sort of hot tubs, which actually is, and above ground pools, which actually is another market for us. Um, so the market is quite large, and, and we do kind of a detailed analysis on all the different kinds of pools and owners of those pools. And we think it's about a billion and a half market in the U.S. and commercial side and about a billion and a half on the consumer side. Mm. The consumer side is sort of supervised, you know, swim, have kids, you know, pool parties and whatnot. Um, so it's not, not a small market, and you multiply that you know, internationally, it's a pretty big market. Um, the interesting thing about, about, you know, so it's a bit of a quirky customer base, but one interesting thing, it's also incredibly collaborative customer base. They don't necessarily view each other as competitors. You could have a town pool and a YMCA and a JCC, you know, with yeah, blocks of each other and they're collaborating, right? Yeah. And so, and they're very eager for a solution like this. We've, we've shown it to some almost 30 different pool uh, folks, you know, pool directors, aquatic directors, and, you know, had great reaction. And we think the word of mouth is going to be extremely strong. There's a handful of events that these people go to every year um, so that we, we can reach them. Um, so, the other thing you brought up was the hardware. Of course, hardware has gotten a lot easier. The stuff's all been 3D printed. Even the, the systems, the kind of stuff you see here with all our, our, our tower system has been 3D printed at this point. It will, of course, you know, we'll go to more standard production when, when we scale up. But that enables us to, to iterate very quickly. The, the, the tracker you put on, you know, that's probably about 25 different designs. <laughs> We've done of that, which you can do now, you know. Yeah. Five years ago, that, that well, would have been nearly impossible. So it'll cost a couple of thousand dollars to install. And you might have some yeah. modest profit there. Yeah. No, the margins are actually pretty good. I mean, the, that's one thing about Bluetooth. It is very inexpensive, right? So Is it stable? Because I can't get my phone to stay connected to Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. And yeah. I know this sounds very yeah. like first person, but yep. I do think people have questions about how good Bluetooth yeah, is. Yeah. Is it a stable it, technology well, today? What it, well, so we're not pairing, right? And that, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's the issue you have is that it, you know, pairing gets out of sync and the phone is doing you know, a thousand other yeah. things, right? Yeah. And it gets glitchy. So we're, these are just in, in broadcast mode, you know, the, the, the trackers, and the system has some pretty sophisticated software to be... You know, Listening for them. Yeah, yeah. So you have 50 different ones in the pool. Each one has an ID. Each yep. one is broadcasting. If they stop yep. broadcasting, the countdown clock exactly. starts. Exactly. Boom. Yep. And let's talk a little bit about the behavior change. Yeah. I, I just would interrupt one second. So the other you said about... Um, you know, the market, it, it, with investors, a lot of the challenge actually is awareness. Because, mm. you know, the statistics we've talked about here, very, very few people 
know about that. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of like, oh, is, you know, is drowning just a little problem that you want to solve because, you know, you were personally affected by it or something? So the answer is the, the angels that we are talking to and getting traction with have had some personal connection with it. They have some awareness of it. And we're actually targeting some people that we think could be interesting. Um, if Michael Phelps is out there listening, we've been trying to get old to him for a while. He's yeah. actually doing some angel investing now. Michael Phelps uh, listens. Michael Phelps listens, all right. Yeah, I think so if he'll, you, uh, he'll put in 25K. I know somebody who knows Michael Phelps, actually, all right. very all right. well. Phil Helmuth, a professional poker player, good world's deal. greatest poker player, is a friend of mine. He's very good friends with Phelps, so I, could, right. I could definitely get you in touch all with right. Phelps. Um, and he's... Yeah, I mean, and, if, and, if, and his foundation gives money to boys and girls clubs uh, uh, to, for for swim education, and we've actually talked to his executive director of the foundation, and they do fundraising to do that. So we think you know they're eager for the boys and girls clubs to have these kind of systems, you know, for safety. Hmm. Um, so we think ultimately it's getting some investors with some connection to it, and then getting more traction, demonstrating the market. And what about equity venture. crowdfunding or Kickstarter, Indiegogo mm. style mm. crowdfunding? Mm. Wouldn't a community who wants to install this rally yep. around it yep. and yep. pay for it? Everybody says, "Hey, for yeah, yeah." It's a, it's not so much the, the sort of the consumers buying it. I mean, you could sort of you know buy a, a tracker for a very inflated price to kind of pay for a system uh, for your yeah. town. Um, or it could be more of a, there are other websites that essentially do community fundraisers, like let's raise $10,000 to build a playground or, sure. or go fund for me. the school. Yeah. 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 And there's sites that are specifically for community stuff. So yeah. So we're looking at, at um, and there's some other groups that um, are focused on swim education that want to help us do that. Kind what of about that the there. behavioral issue? You, you have yeah. to change behavior. People have to put yeah. this thing on their head. They're going to say, it looks weird. Kids are going to be persnickety. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to make fun yeah. of each other. Right. You look like right. the guy Lobot from Empire Strikes <laughs> Back. Yada, yada. Yeah, you know, we, do been, you think that's an issue or do you think it's a non-issue? It, it, we've been pleasantly surprised of it being a non-issue. We, hmm. we mostly get it from dads, frankly, that says, huh. my kid will never do this, right? The moms are like, my kid will do this. <laughs> yeah, mom's like, mm. and, and And the aquatic directors are like, hey, if you want to be in my pool, you're going to wear one of these. And the kids, you know, it's new, it's novel. They're like, wow, you know, when we go test it at pools, they're like, let me wear it, let me wear it. You know, we kind of yeah. get that reaction. And they are quite comfortable. I've swam with them a number of times. You really forget it, have it, and the kids forget they have it on. I, um, when I put it on, forgot I had it on while we yeah. were talking. It's yeah. incredibly lightweight and easy yep. to use. Yep. So yep. that's the other way is if people were required to buy one mm -hmm. for five bucks, yep. they'd so, be four dollars in profit or two dollars yeah. in profit, yep. whatever it is, yep. and eventually they would pay for the base station. Yep. So there, yep. do you, you see? I, I notice you uh, have them listed that people would, I guess, swap in and out of them. But yeah, people could the, the, also buy them sure. and so, have some, them perfectly sized. Yeah, yeah. Some, some pools are looking to do that. I think other pools just want to keep, keep control of it. Mm -hmm. And so they have that, that tower that we showed there is kind of um, a storage tower. So yep. you can pick them up and put them back, and that'll be by the entrance. Um, just have, have more control of it. And if you're going to mandate everyone has one, then you know, making them buy them can be a little tricky. But When it's broadcasting the Bluetooth mm -hmm. feed, the unit itself doesn't know it's underwater. The base station does, correct? Correct. Correct. If the unit knew it was underwater, it, it actually will because it loses it loses connection. So it, ah, it, so it, it is does getting, sense that yep. it does yep. know that yep. it's not getting the return signal. Yep. Then you could put LEDs on it, which and have yep. it flash yep. when somebody is over thirty seconds, so the yep. person knows, hey, we, I should probably get some air because I'm about to have a lifeguard drag me up from the bottom of the pool. Yeah. And if the person is lost and that LED is going off, yep. it alerts the people yep. around them to help. We have. I could put I could put up a video. I think we, I don't have it right on me, but yes, absolutely. Oh, you're There's testing LED. that. Yeah, we actually have prototypes that do have that, and and it assists for for finding that victim. It's also the other thing we do is detect if if one of these falls off and, and it's floating. We actually we have a flex sensor in there that detects that it's no longer on a head uh. and it's floating, and so that would tell a lifeguard. It also, you could fire a strobe there, so a lifeguard see yes. okay, there's one that's off. Where's a kid that doesn't have it on, or is there a kid? Underwater, right? Because it could be find. rough housing. It could be rough housing, or somehow they could have knocked it off. If, if, sure. You know, but when people on the drown, they actually don't wave. That they essentially have their arms out to the side. Trying oh, is to that right? How to? Yeah. Get to the Navigate surface. But we, so we we haven't had very few cases with them falling off. Um, you know, diving off a high dive head first, it might fall off. But it's it. it How do you stays on. think about the ocean? We talked about contained yeah. pools. Yeah. The ocean. I am absolutely. 
uh, vigilant and paranoid about my daughter in the ocean because yep. she's been going to Malibu yeah. now and yeah. surfing and... I find everybody in Malibu is very laissez-faire yeah, about yeah. the ocean, and I'm terrified of the yeah, ocean. Yeah, I don't know about Malibu, but it's interesting. I think people, in general, parents are are much more aware of the danger. And one of the stats we showed before is actually only four percent of all those drownings occur in the ocean. Which, which is that I, because of the number of the frequency of pool usage? I think part of it, yeah, just yeah. the pools and lakes, and the, it's just they are much more accessible. Yeah, um, and I think people are, are much more comfortable, right? Right. People, the parents get to the ocean. I don't know if they're thinking about sharks or something, but there's like it's danger in the ocean yeah. and waves, and it's on you know ripped, ripped, you know, tide currents. Yeah, that's something that. So and it's dark. Um, yeah, typically. but but to answer your question, yes, this um, it 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 absolutely can work in, in the ocean. Um, obviously, if it's very strong waves and you're getting tumbled around, there's a little more chance of these falling off, and then. A little yeah. harder to find, so so big surf it might be a bit of a problem, but you know, of course, a lot of a lot of times there's not big surf, and the only other challenge is doing the the triangulation location uh, on it because you don't get the other two points in the triangle. Yeah, yeah. Unless you had and a buoy or you something. You buoys, there. but yeah, and that can work in like you know Long Island Sound, for example. They, sure, it could work. Cause you very infrequently get big waves, but. At an ocean beach, you know, where you get a little bit tough, you know, very often get you know five or six foot waves. That could be. A little I know this sounds crazy, but I've seen videos online of people with um, essentially airbag type yep. solutions. Yep. You must have come across these because now you're the center of the drowning world <laughs> and innovation and gadgets. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think about these? Because there are ones where people right. wear a vest. Mm -hmm. And the idea is if you were underwater, it would pop open and shoot you up to the right, top. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, there, it's, it's a valuable uh, tool to use. Um, I think it's, it's obviously more expensive. It's a little more cumbersome um, to get people to, to wear those. Um, a lot of those are, are kind of man overboard kind, kind of solutions. Yeah, ocean right? ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I always think also for surfers and yep. then also for kids yep. who are learning to surf if they wore a vest. Yep. Because they're wearing a wetsuit anyway, right. and a vest yeah. would yeah. probably be like very light. Yeah. Eventually, that's what we'll have is we'll have yeah. a vest that has GPS or some kind of strobe mm -hmm. lights on mm -hmm. it, and then right. boom, if you're underwater right. for it, would know you're underwater for some period of time. Yep. yep. It's, but there's no underwater sensor. Well, sure. You, you can sense depth of, of mm. water, and you also sense. Yeah, know, sure. Duration. When you go scuba diving, you have a yeah. depth sure. gauge, but yeah. that doesn't do down to the inch. Yeah. And this is right. a matter of inches. So, yeah, the, the, the issue, especially we call kind of, you know, the, the dead man float, which is, you know, kind of an ironic term here, but, but you can't have a floating victim where literally it's just their face underwater, their back's on the surface, and, but they're drowning. And so a lot of things, those kind of things, think they're not drowning. They're just floating, right? Mm. So that's why we try to get, you know, we're trying to get can you breathe or not is ultimately detecting drowning. And so having some sensor close to the nose and mouth is mm. essentially the way you term. Of course, you could sense other ways of, of respiratory rate um, that you could try to detect. But then how does that communicate out to somebody else? If it triggers, you know, a, a floating vest, you know, that, that is a potential. Yeah. Um, was, the, the one thing that people mistake is some people say, oh, just have something that I can pull the rip cord and I float to the top. Yeah. Drowning victims do not have the sense to pull a, a cord. No, I mean, themselves. this is why we all do in scuba, you do a lot of training yeah. so that this stuff becomes automatic. If right, we're in right. a scuba situation and, my, and I take a, uh, you know, for my regulator, a, a breath right. of air and I get water, yeah. I know immediately to go for that second, you know, right, uh, right. squid and get that going. Right, right. And I also know, like, if I need to get to the surface, yeah. just pump air into the yeah. BCD. But a right. person who's not trained nope. is not going to be yeah. automatic. And, and kids in general are going to panic. It's, it's, it's the, yeah. yeah. I love domain names. You know that because I own inside.com and launch.co and I own calacanis.com, obviously, but I also own a day.com. I had 20.com for a while and sold that for 2 million bucks. I love domain names. Great domain names are awesome. They speak volumes for your brand and you need to buy domain names in a very simple, quick and easy way. I hate most of those domain registrars out there because they're constantly confusing me and they're not clean and not simple. Hover.com is an amazing way for you to quickly and easily register your domain name. Here we are, my team registering the domain name launchpartnerships.co. And what's great about it is you can one-click buy. Look at this, proceed 
to check out. And we can have Who Is Privacy for free. Who Is Privacy is super important so you don't start getting spam. And you all have experiences. You register a domain name, you start getting flooded with spam. A lot of those other domain registrars, in fact, all of them are charging you to do privacy. Nope, they do it for free. And I want you to go to hover.com slash twist, hover.com slash twist, like hovercraft, and you will get 10% off your first purchase. And what's great about their product is it easily allows you to connect those domain names, as you can see here, to any website, whether you're using Squarespace or Wistia or Tumblr, whatever you're using. They're going to make it super easy, and they have best-in-class customer support. And... They personalize your email with your domain name, and they have over 400 domain name extensions to choose from, including all the classes, but fun niche extensions. It is an amazing product. So here is your call to action. Go to hover.com slash twist, hover.com slash twist, H-O-V-E-R.com slash twist, and get 10% off your first purchase. It's elegant, it's simple, it's clean, it's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. And that's what you're looking for in a product. It's a great product. Go check out hover.com slash twist. I had a dream when I was thinking about this. I'm kidding you not. Mm. And I had this crazy dream that a pool would be made that would auto drain. No, the, yeah, I know right. you're talking about the <laughs> auto lifting of the base. Yeah, yeah. I was just dreaming yeah. like, imagine it's there was a pool have, that yeah. you... When somebody was drowning, the lifeguard could press a button and all yeah. four sides of the pool just open up. And I think people would get injured more, but it, it was from my childhood. The tsunami would wipe people out, yeah. Exactly. No, what happened was we would we had in Brooklyn the yeah. cheap pools, the round above octagons, ground. Above, above ground, ground pools. Yeah. yeah, and it breaks. And one of them broke one time yeah. on our block, yeah. and it flooded three basements. Right. Yeah. Uh, no big deal. Not like a ton of water, but right. – um, it just ripped open the side and it was kind of like a little gnarly, the metal or whatever. Yeah, and then yeah. there were people in it and they just went they, all flying out onto the lawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like, there was no, yeah. <laughs> there was yeah. no graceful exit yeah. from that pool. Yeah. And you know, people that have, you know, you've seen designs, there's been patents made for, you know, the bottom of the pool rises up, you know, with, with, with a, a, a grate. So the water just goes through it, but the people get lifted up. Um, obviously very expensive. Doesn't work with round bottom pools. People get, you know, their hands. But that hand, exists, their, the lifting up of the... I, no, I just, you know... There is the patents, a pool. Now, this is another thing I saw. I was talking to somebody who was building, like, a killer house. Mm -hmm. And there is a pool, I kid you not, that you would could put under, your, like, your driveway. Right. Not, I don't know why you would, or your back deck. <laughs> and it looks like you have stone. And you press yeah. a button... And the stone just starts lowering, and the water starts flowing on top of it, and it goes to the yeah, bottom. Yeah. So huh. basically, you have Pretty the cool. bases on hydraulic lifts, yeah, yeah. and the water just comes up, and it goes through the cracks in the yep, thing. And then yep, when it comes yep. up to the top, it kind of... <laughs> it's a driveway. <laughs> it lands, That's and cool. the killer video, which if I could find, I would do it right now, but I'm hosting the show, is <laughs> a car is on the driveway. Yeah. And they drive the car off the, you know, the Maybach drives off yeah. the driveway. Somebody presses a button and you see like, <laughs> and the pool. water is there and you're like, wow, that's pretty dope. Yeah. And I looked into it. I think it was like, it would normally cost like $150,000 to make a pool. And yeah. this one would have yeah. cost 500000 yeah. to have these like crazy hydraulic lifts. Right, right. And I was like, well, that's not too practical. <laughs> not very practical that you can build three pools for the price of one. Um, yeah. But yeah. the cameras in the pool, that will be helpful at some point. Yeah. It will, you know, for, for uh, private pools, you know, especially if you're building a new pool, um, oh, right. you, you, you can put some in there. And especially if there's no line of sight obstructions, although some, you know, pools get pretty creative, so you have lots of multiple cameras. Mm -hmm. But in but your standard square pool or rectangular pool, yeah. will you put yep. four cameras down there? But no so, biggie so deal. pools are great at, I mean, cameras are great at detecting the presence of a swimmer. So, for example, you know, the backyard pool, if the toddler, you know, wanders off into the pool, you can have either splash detection or you can have a camera just alerting. It's just a simple identification. Hey, there's someone there, you know, when they shouldn't be, right? But underwater, as I mentioned before, you know, distinguishing between a drowning victim and just a kid swimming underwater is quite difficult. But a lot of these guys are really trying to distinguish between what a drowning victim looks like underwater. Uh, here, I'll show you this. And there's not a lot of training data for that. <laughs> I just did a quick search for a pool turns into a deck and found it in under 10 seconds. Sorry to interrupt the show, but the I thought this is so dope that you have to see it for people watching. You hit, look at this, all of a sudden, boop. Oh, that's a uh, pool cover. 
Or, or is, it, is it dropping, actually? I think that these uh, transforming pools, it just takes a minute, but they... It's dropping, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's dropping, yeah. basically. And the water flows yep. in between the yep. beams and then eventually yep. it fills yep. up. Yep. That's so you can cool. see here this one. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, you'd have to be a maniac to do this. <laughs> and it's a nice wooden bottom pool, which is... You don't see that very often. This is the first thing I'm going to buy after the Uber <laughs> IPO, is this insanity. <laughs> I thought this was the coolest thing I've ever seen, though. The floor can also adjust the water level. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. The floor can adjust yeah, can the shallow, water level. All shallow so, in, yeah. so you have all shallow. Yeah, ah, yeah. very go. fascinating. All right, there you go, folks. There's a, a million <laughs> different ways to skin the cat. But you're going to sincerely look into the computer vision stuff, because absolutely, that's... I mean, you're independent of device. You just want to solve for drowning. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. How much and money? Everything, and I, I'm a big advocate of computer vision. I've you know, invested yeah. in a, I'm an advisory board of a company that is doing some really cool stuff in, in the in, uh, residential space, looking for an anomalous behavior in people in apartment buildings and office buildings that they kind of alert to. Criminals. You're call. talking about criminals. No, 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 no. Just um, you know, scoff laws. <laughs> and also huh. uh, in New York City with rent um, control, you're not supposed to sublease your apartment. Some places you're oh, not, Airbnb. not supposed to do Airbnb uh, things. Oh. It's kind of called O-W-A-L, owl. Owl. Out of New York. I have an owl for my car that is a dash cam for one of my cars. Yeah. Um, it's the minivan that the nannies use, and I mm -hmm. put this owl cam in it. Yep. It records inside, outside. Yep. And... I know where the car is, what speed it's going, obviously. Yep. But it also records and makes short videos and sends them to my phone. Mm -hmm. When the car's parked, if somebody were to kick the car, it says right. bump. Yeah. Yeah. Or if somebody gets in the car, it turns on, when you get in the car, it turns on a bright LED yeah. and the camera shows you. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to rob the car <laughs> and the light goes on yeah, yeah. and it shows you because it's got a big yeah. LED screen on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Al camera. I wish these were sponsors yeah. of our podcast because I would talk <laughs> for 20 minutes yeah. about the Al well, camera. Yeah. Well, this is O W A L. O W A L. Yeah, .io which is different than the Al conferencing camera, which is yeah. right there. Yep. And that, that is, is awesome yeah. for yeah. that purpose. But I guess everybody with a camera company has to use an Al because Al's yeah. are wise and have great vision. <laughs> So I think you need to yeah, rename. Yeah. They're just a software company. They, they don't wave drowning hard, detection has to be <laughs> the owl, owl drowning <laughs> prevention or something. Yeah. Uh, well, listen. And how much have you raised for this so far? We, we, we've just been. Uh, we haven't. We've no raise. Yep, no raise yet. We we have a commitment from the the Connecticut uh, Innovation Fund for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Very nice. As a matching fund. Yeah. And we have. Uh, um, what do you need starting. to get this commercially deployed and start selling it? How much money will it take? How many full time employees yep. to finish? Uh, um, it's about a million dollars. About um, a million. Yeah. Huh. So, but right right now we're we're probably going to close on a few hundred thousand you know, in the coming weeks is is the goal to huh. kind of get and angels. Uh, yep. Absolutely. Uh, who have some affinity for this or you. I like mm, it. I yeah. think it would be something where we should talk a little bit about our incubator. You'd mm. be the perfect incubator company, even though we tend to want to have people with products in markets. I mm. feel like this could be an exception because mm. I really feel like what you're doing is super important. And if you just get started, even if you just get to break even, mm -hmm. you're going to have the flywheel going and the trust going that you can make solutions and then when computer vision or cameras or whatever else emerges yep. whatever sensors emerge in the future who knows yep. Yep. there could be a necklace that does this eventually mm -hmm. or you know other things yep yep it, it, you know, it's a super important work. So thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. I, you know, I, there's a lot of ideas founders can work on and you could be building enterprise software. I mean this sincerely, Mark, you could build enterprise software and have a quicker, easier route to making a ton of money as CEO and, right. and getting your next 10 million, or you can focus on something that matters in the world. And I yep. commend you for focusing on something that actually matters. More founders, enough with the photo sharing apps, okay, <laughs> enough. Or food delivery, I think we got that covered. <laughs> got that. I don't know, I got about yeah. six food delivery apps. I got Good Eggs, I got Instacart, I got Uber Eats is the best mm. one, obviously mm. everybody knows that. But you know, it's DoorDash, I mean, there's too many people delivering food now. Work on something where you save lives, prevent death. Yes, uh, yes. It's, it, it is fun. And I, I've, I've said I've been in the startup game for 20 plus years and, and they've all been been fun and been exciting and it's, you know, has its challenges mm. and its rewards. But this is, is pretty unique in terms of seeing when That's people nice. actually, these aquatic directors, it's like they're really touched that, that people you know, that have my kind of background are applying, you know, that experience to solve a problem that's so important. And if it costs and, 15 grand, you mm -hmm. just... 
charge them 500 a month for yeah, five absolutely. years and you're absolutely. done. You just yep. got to get some financing yep. arm that, yep. you know, absolutely. there's some yeah. financing yeah. arm out there that will let yeah. you lease and, this. And, and, and a lot of the, the towns will have, the towns or, or YMCA's, whatever, they'll have a discretionary budget of something, you know, 10, under 10,000, under 5,000. So you can kind of get started. You, mm-hmm. know, you can do, you know. I mean, eventually you'll need half as many lifeguards too. Maybe not to start. Yeah, but I do we're, think we're if not, you had three lifeguards on duty, you might be able to yeah, go to two. Yeah, we, the statistic we, will tell you. Yeah, we certainly are not advocating that. This is not a lifeguard replacement. You no. Know, this is really to, I mean, lifeguard is a very hard job, right? It, oh, you think? Be, yeah. yeah. And so this is really, we... You know, we promote it as to empower your lifeguards to do yeah. a much better job. You can't say it. I can. It's going to eventually, <laughs> you may need yeah. not as many lifeguards. Or yeah. if a lot of these pools and hotels and stuff like that. Don't have them. Yeah. Don't have it. Exactly. It's like you're yeah. on your own. Right. So you this, go to a this hotel would alert, pool. This would alert the front desk, the security guard. Exactly. Whatever, and get there. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. better than yeah. nothing. I mean, yep. literally when you go to the rich, yeah. if you go to the St. Regis here, I used to take my daughter swimming at the St. Regis in San Francisco sometimes yep. Where, yep. as a treat. Yeah, and we'd stay over, we'd do you know, breakfast, and we'd go swimming for two days. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. There's nobody in there. Right. Yep. It's empty. Yep. And if something happens, you're on your own. Yep. yep. All right, Mark, yep. Karen, you can follow him on the Twitter, M-A-R-K-C-A-R-O-N. The company, again, wavedrowningdetection.com. Michael Phelps, make sure you email me. I'll introduce you to <laughs> Phil. All right. Phil will then introduce you to Michael Phelps if okay. he feels that you're, uh, you got this dialed in enough. I think you do. And if anybody else is, uh, I mean, I know Michael listens to the pod, so Michael okay. Phelps, big fan of the book Angel. I made that up. I don't know if he read Angel yet, but if he's an angel investor, he probably has. Michael Phelps, uh, world's greatest. Uh, this is a, it's a no-brainer. He should put 25K in. You give him a 50 basis points right. as an advisor, maybe a point and a half. He's kind of worth it. He's got gold medals. Absolutely. And uh, you go for the gold. All right. Thank you, Emmy Watering <laughs> producer Jackie, and we'll see you all next time on This Week in Startups. Bye-bye.